Hey everybody, I'm Ruler31, back for FSI DFS. I'm going to break down the six game slate for Monday, uh, May 24th. This slate, not going to really do the normal format of giving you the pictures and stacks and then going through every game and then doing lineup construction because just such a small slate and there's really not a lot of great options um, that stand out for like anything. So let's go game by game and then I'll just give you a quick roster breakdown. So starting at the first game, starting at 710. So you get five more minutes to take with your lineups tonight. It's going to be the Mets and the Rockies, Gomber versus Peterson. Uh, Gomber has actually not been bad recently. I'm kind of like him here against the Mets. He's one of the, probably the cheapest pitchers I'd play here at five, six. Uh, he's had five quality starts this year. Um, he's had six games over 17 DK points and three games over 20 DK points. And most sites have him projected from only like 12 to 15 DK points. I think he's going to definitely get above that. He's up against a Mets team that's so banged up. There's like no Alonzo there anymore. Like for right-handed power, maybe Villar and Lindor, but McCann, but it's a pitcher's ballpark too. So really like Gobber. Pearson on the other side, the Rockies have been great outside of Colorado. Uh, he's been okay. So I, I think you have like an average team batting against um, an average pitcher here. So not really interested in either one of those. The Mets bats, again, really, if you're not playing, play Gomber. Maybe some of these guys is a one-off. Uh, McCann, a 3-3, if he's hitting up in the order for catcher, possibly. Uh, moving on to the next game is Detroit and the Cleveland Indians. You have Sam Hankins uh, against Spencer Turnbull. I think the Cleveland pitcher is probably the worst one on the slate, the one that's probably most likely to get blown up. It's kind of shocking to open up and see the lines here and seeing that Detroit's actually a favorite um, over Cleveland. Uh, Turnbull's uh, a good pitcher. He's been, he had that um, no hitter that he just threw against Seattle. Uh, Kansas City, he was okay. Struggled a little bit the couple games before that at um, Boston and at New York. Uh, but, you know, overall, I think against this Cleveland lineup, who only really has um, a couple guys that can for power, which would be Ramirez and, and Luplo. Um, Hernandez can at times, but Rosario and Rosario have been okay, but not, not great. And, um, so I think you can get some strikeouts here. I think he can do really good. And I think he's going to be a very under-owned option because there's two other guys that I think people will probably gravitate to. Um, wouldn't play any of the Cleveland bats. Maybe again, Ramirez as a one-off a switch hitter against Turnbull because you know, he, he is human. He has given up some home runs. But I would think I would like – the Detroit bats here. They're relatively cheap to a Grossman leading off projected uh, as uh, four seven, but everybody else is under four K. So uh, you have a lot of righties here against um, this Cleveland pitcher who's a lefty. So definitely like to stack them, especially like uh, Haas here, who's a catcher eligible. Also, I think he's playing left field today, uh, batting like fifth in the lineup. Um, he's only three, four. Only weather concern today might be a little bit of rain, but we're only looking at like 35% chance in uh, the Orioles and the Twins. You have John Means against Shoemaker. Uh, Means has been good recently, but, you know, after he uh, no hit Seattle, uh, his last two games has only been in the teens, so he, he's kind of come back down to earth. Um, you know, he gave a four own runs against Tampa Bay last time out. Uh, but you know, he did have five quality starts before that. So no issues playing means, although this Minnesota lineup, they've been banged up. It all depends on who they throw out there. If they throw out a lot of the uh, more AAA guys in the lineup, then I think that definitely increases means value here. Um, at, he's 10-2. So he, he might be the second highest pitcher ownership on the slate. If um, in the next game, they don't pick the two guys facing each other, if they want to try to get the win. Uh, but this Minnesota lineup can be okay. Matt Shoemaker is probably the second worst pitcher on the slate for Minnesota. So I definitely like uh, 
these um, Oriole bats. Uh, they did pretty well against some bad Washington pitching over the weekend. So uh, Mullins at 4-1, Mancini's 5-5. Five, five. He's, he's pretty expensive. And I think I would definitely want a guy in another game at first base, which I'll get to in a second. But I think he's a, a good differentiation off that guy if that guy's going to be very chalky. So I'm very okay with an Oriole stack here. And I'm okay with um, if you want to stack some of these right-handed power hitters against means. I think there's more of a GPP play stacking Minnesota and maybe a couple one-offs if you can fit them in your cash lineup. Okay, the pitcher duel of the day is going to be San Diego and Milwaukee. There's only a seven total here. It's a pick game. You have Blake Snell, who is actually seems to be stretched out. Uh, the first couple games were disappointed because he didn't go very far, but he's almost close to 100 pitches here against a Milwaukee lineup who's left-handed heavy. Um, he's really good against left-handed pitching. The right-handers that they can throw at him are not that great. You have Kane. Every Zoo Garcia is okay, but Pena, Willie Adams, Pablo Reyes, look at some of the guys there. Uh, I think definitely he could probably get 10 strikeouts here. And Woodruff on the other side has been one of the best pitchers in baseball. He's probably the most talented pitcher on this slate. And, you know, he also could get 10 Ks against the San Diego lineup where Machado is banged up and out. And uh, Grisham hasn't been in the lineup recently. So you have people like Pham and Profar up higher in the lineup. Tatis is back. Hosmer is still there. Uh, he hits um, – right as well but the rest of the lineup um is not as good so i can see possibly 10 strikeouts there too so i think possibly in cash if you want to take both these pitchers and just you know forget about the win um it, i wouldn't take bats on either side unless you're going game theory and think one of these uh pitchers is going to be very popular and just want to stack against them to to see what happens and if you're doing like a Multi-entry contrast or 20 max, I'm, I'm fine with that, but I don't think I like any of the pieces of the bats of these games, but I do like both pitchers. If I had to pick one, I think I'd go with Snell for the discount. He's only 8-9, um, but both of them are definitely good, and I think probably a lot of people will try to pair like Woodruff and Means if they're hunting for the win. Next game, we have uh, St. Louis and the Chicago White Sox. You have Kim against Lynn. Uh, Kim's been an okay pitcher. He tries to keep it out of the ground, but this White Sox team is really, really good hitting lefties. So I think uh, definitely they're going to be my favorite stack of the day. So I'm not touching Kim as a pitcher. Lance Lynn has been okay also. He's kind of a reverse splits pitcher. So, um, But with all the other pitchers here, I'm really not interested in him here. There's there's so many other better options. So not touching either the pitchers. I uh, love the White Sox. I'm probably going to stack Anderson, Mikado, um, Brayu, Mercedes here. Maybe throw in Vaughn too. He's always cheap, like any of the righties against Kim. And on the other side, in a GPP, I might have a Cardinal stack against Lynn. Um, probably more of a multi entry thing. It's not going to be my main GPP stack, but uh, he is hittable so i think i'll uh, try those because st louis if they put up runs there in bunches last game we have is um seattle and oakland we have kikuchi and montas um both are okay pitchers um kikuchi recently let's see what his form is so he's got detroit which usually is a really good matchup um he gave up three runs to them he gave up three runs to the dodgers he gave up three runs to baltimore um but he had quality start in his last four he shut out houston but before that he gave up five runs to boston five runs to houston two runs to minnesota and three runs to giants so he definitely can give some runs so which puts me on the right-handed ace bats against him and my toss is probably going to be if people are paying down they'll probably take him over gomber he's a better real life pitcher than Gomber, but um Seattle they're they're hit and miss. Like I said, they've been no hit twice this year already, but uh Seeger and um and definitely has some power. So he's he's a consideration of one off, but I have no problem taking Montas. 
I think I like Gomber a little bit better against the Mets in that matchup there in that ballpark. Uh, but either one, I think it's fine as an SP2 if you want to pay up. And I definitely like these Oakland bats against um, Seattle team here that seemed to struggle. So line of construction, I think what I'm going to do is if you want to take like Woodruff and Snell, you, you can – play some White Sox bats, but I think you can only get in um, four of them. I'd take Anderson, Marcada, Abreu, and I would probably skip Mercedes Grandal and then just go Vaughn. That gives you about, I think about 4K for the rest of the, the players in there. You can put in some of the um, Detroit players or Baltimore players. I think they're the cheap ones to fill in. Again, a catcher, I like Haas. Um, in this matchup, he's probably batting like fourth or fifth. He's only three, four, uh, he's playing outfield. So he's not like a catcher that might get pitch hit for in, um, later part of the game. And then you can fill in the other spots with some of the other cheap bats or throw in some Baltimore ones there. Uh, if you want to go Woodruff and means that's a little bit harder. I mean, you can still take your, um, three or four if you go with Vaughn um, bats, but then you might have to take like, throw in some um, like Mets bats in there to to get it going. But I think there's still some cheaper Detroit pieces that you could probably get up in, into that lineup, um, depending on how the batting order comes out to, you might be able to find some guys that are um, lower than 3K to round out that lineup. But I think, like I said, I think I'm going to go with Snell and I'm going to take um, Gomber. I, I kind of like that pairing to get five White Sox in. So I take Anderson, Mercado, Abreu, Mercedes, and then Vaughn. And that actually opens up and uh, I can get some of these Oakland bats in. I can get two Oakland outfielders in. And then um, I don't know if I can get uh, Pinder or Lowry there for second base, but you know, I might need to maybe take one of the Tigers outfielders or throw a shoop in there or something like that. So that's where I'm looking. And um, again, it's not the greatest slate, but there it's not a sl six game slate where it's just like, okay, everybody's going to play these pitchers and everybody's going to play these batters and everybody's going to have the same lineup. So it's going to give you a chance to differentiate a little bit of yourself tonight. So um, enjoy it. Let's see how the lineups come out. And um, again, like I said, Woodruff Snell, probably the top pitchers, means um, also in the conversation. Turnbell, don't mind him. If you want to go mid range, can be low owned. Cheaper pitchers, I like Gomber and Montas. And for bats, my favorite stack is going to be Chicago White Sox. Second would be Detroit, then Baltimore. I'm not touching any bats in San Diego or Minnesota game or Milwaukee game, Minnesota bats. I do like against the Orioles. Um, don't think I'm going to touch the bats in the Mets and Rockies game. Um, Cleveland, maybe some one-offs. A's like the bats there. And St. Louis has a deep GPP. So that's all we have. So um, we love helping you guys. So if you could help us out by liking this video, sharing it with others, subscribing to our channel, really appreciate it. Um, drop some comments below. We'll try to look periodically through the day and um, get you some answers to your questions or hit me up at MegaRuler31 on Twitter. A lot of people do that and we we'll try to do the best we can to answer your questions there also. And check out our bio. It'll, teach, it'll show you how you can sign up for our Discord where we've got many free things for our users there. And if you're interested in our premium package, the information is there also. So thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.